Welcome to Pushback. I'm Aaron Maté here with Stephen F. Cohen, Professor Emeritus of Russian Studies at Princeton and NYU, author of the book War with Russia? Question mark, from Putin in Ukraine to Trump and Russiagate. Welcome, Professor Cohen. Good to be with you again. Thank you. So let's talk Ukraine gate, dominating the news right now. Uh, at the center of this impeachment drive against Trump is that uh, he briefly froze military aid to Ukraine, and the belief there is he did so for political purposes. Putting that question aside, what has gotten lost in all this is the question of why are we sending military aid to Ukraine, and is that wise policy? The conventional line we get is that we are helping defend Ukraine from Russian aggression after Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, took Crimea illegally uh, in 2014, uh, and we are helping Ukraine respond uh, to that and to help support Ukraine in its fight against Russian separatists in the Donbas. What say you to that? Well, the first thing to remember is, is that President Obama was under enormous pressure to send military equipment to Ukraine. I don't know if you remember that or not, but it was a major campaign, uh, and it was led, I, as I recall, by people very close to him, and he refused. And why did he refuse? Well, I'm not sure what his calculation was, but the, the wisdom of not sending is clear. First of all, what everybody must want is peace between Russia and Ukraine. So why would you pour more weapons why would you tempt one Ukrainian? Now, the leadership of Ukraine has changed, but why would you tempt one or another Ukrainian leadership to broaden the war? Where you want, above all, to bring peace, correct? Secondly, uh, in whose hands eventually do such weapons fall? I mean, there's no guarantee in a place like Ukraine that the Ukrainian army, which is in the, involved in the black market in a big way, those weapons could go anywhere. Uh, but ultimately, you have a situation now which seems not to be widely understood that the new president of Ukraine, Zelensky, ran as a peace candidate. This is a bit of a stretch, and maybe it doesn't mean a whole lot to your generation, but he, he ran a kind of George McGovern campaign. The difference was McGovern got wiped out, and Zelensky won by, I think, 71, 72 percent. He won an enormous uh, mandate to make peace. So uh, that means he has to negotiate with Vladimir Putin. And there are various formats, right? There's the so-called uh, Minsk format, which involves the German and the French. There's bilateral directly with Putin. But his willingness, and this is what's important and not well reported here, uh, his willingness to deal directly with Putin which his predecessor, Poroshenko, was not, or couldn't, or whatever reason, actually required considerable boldness on Zelensky because there are opponents of this in Ukraine, and they are armed. Some people say they're fascists, but they're certainly ultra-nationalists. And they have said that they'll remove and kill Zelensky if he continues along this line of negotiating with Putin. So now along comes Trump, right? So Trump makes a wrong-headed phone call to Zelensky about Biden and information. It was a wrong thing to do. I mean, no two ways of looking at that. But the more important thing is, and that's why I'd like to see the full transcript of the, uh, we've only been given a partial so far as I know. I want to know if Trump encouraged Zelensky to continue the negotiation with Putin. And here's why. Zelensky cannot go forward as I've explained, I mean, he, his life is being threatened, literally, by quasi-fascist movements in Ukraine. He can't go forward with full peace negotiations with Russia, with Putin, unless America has his back. He, maybe that won't be enough, but unless the White House encourages this diplomacy, Zelensky has no chance of negotiating an end of the war, so the stakes are enormously high. All this stuff by Biden, it's bad, but it's a distraction. It's not what we should be focusing on. We should not be shipping more weapons there. There's, there's, there are moments in history, political history, when there's an opportunity that is so good and wise and so often lost, the chance. So the chance for Zelensky, the new president, who had this very large uh, victory, 70 plus percent, to negotiate with Russia and into that war, uh, it's got to be seized, and it requires the United States 
basically simply saying to Zelensky, go for it, we've got your back.